Hello friends, a new video, another topic. This topic is related to the practical clinical physiology. And the topic is tactile vocal fremitus and vocal resonance. Tactile means touch. Vocal is uh, related to the sound, the vocal cords and the sounds produced. And fremitus is vibrations. I mean, it means vibrations. So, tactile vocal fremitus, TVF, and its counterpart in this auscultation is called as vocal resonance. So, first things first, we are talking about the clinical examination of the respiratory system. And uh, I have clubbed the two examinations because fundamentally they are similar, almost the same. Just the tactile vocal fremitus is performed by using touch of the hand. That's why tactile. Tactile means touch. And uh, vocal resonance uh, is done by using a stethoscope. Same procedure, once by the ulnar border of the hand, that is by touch, and the other one uh, by the stethoscope, right? And therefore, I have clubbed it. So, let us try to understand this. Uh, before we proceed any further, let me make a very important point. Respiratory system, nervous system, these systems uh, are examined in a comparative fashion. You know, why? Because the reason is, let us say here, respiratory system, lungs. We have two lungs and therefore, we are going to perform a test on one side and immediately, we will compare the same on the other side. Okay. Same with uh, central nervous system, nervous system examination. We have two halves of the body, we have two cerebral hemispheres and therefore, even CNS examination has to be done like that in a comparative fashion. If you apply touch to one part of the skin, then immediately the next point will be same point on the opposite, on the other side, uh, other end or opposite end, opposite side. So, that is a very important principle that you must, must follow in the clinical examination of these systems. Now, coming to this particular examination, how is it performed? Uh, the patient is in a seated posture, seated position. Respiratory system, uh, it is ideal to, exam, uh, to examine the respiratory system in a seated posture. Why is that? It is because, uh, you know, in the seated posture, by virtue of gravity, effect of gravity, the liver goes down, okay, and therefore there would be a free expansion of the chest wall in the vertical dimension. If the subject is in the lying down posture, then what will happen? The liver will start compressing on the diaphragm, and therefore the expansion of the lungs will be curtailed vertically. Even when the person is lying down, even in the anterior posterior diameter, it is difficult to examine because you are going to examine on the back and the patient is lying down. So, you will have to turn him halfway. These are the things. But remember, uh, therefore, ideally, theoretically, uh, respiratory system should be examined in a seated posture. Of course, there are certain conditions which are very serious conditions, uh, critical conditions and the patient is lying down. So, just for your examination sake, you are not going to make the patient sit up. Okay? So, let that be clear. If the patient is lying down and the patient is seriously ill, you have no choice. It should be in the lying down posture. But otherwise, seated is ideal. Now, coming to the this particular test, uh, tactile vocal fremitus. The patient is going to say 
a particular word repeatedly. What should be that word? Okay, the word should be 111 or 999. Why is that? Listen to the answer. The word should have a nasal twang. I repeat once again. The word that this patient is going to say uh, or patient is going to repeat, that word should have a nasal twang, the nasal tone to it. Why is that? Because as the patient utters those words repeatedly, the vocal cord vibrations will be transmitted down and they will go to the lungs. From the lungs, they will be carried up to the anterior chest wall. And from the anterior chest wall, you will feel those uh, vibrations or sounds. Now, if the word has a nasal twang, listen to this part, nasal twang, like 111 or 999, then the vibrations are better. When you feel those vibrations or hear through the stethoscope, the vibrations will be felt better or sounds will be heard better. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, this question is always asked. Can you not say any other word? Well, you can say, but this is better. Okay. So, same word. Stick to 111 or stick to 999. I mean, ask the patient to say only that particular word. Not, uh, let's say, 111999. Don't change the word. Okay. That's not advised. Uh, each word has its gone, uh, got a particular frequency and therefore stick to that particular word. Right. So the patient will say 111 and you will feel it on the anterior chest wall. So 111. Now, as I said, it's a comparative test. So immediately, once you have placed your ulnar border over here, then on the other side. Uh, ulnar border is said to be more sensitive. It has got a, a higher density of touch and vibration receptors and therefore it is said to, its two point discrimination is also said to be better and vibration sense is also better and therefore ulnar border is used for feeling these vibrations. So ulnar border is placed in, uh, in one particular space, intercostal space. The subject starts saying 111, you have felt it here, then 111. You're, you're feeling it here. Look, in the exams, we come across lots of mistakes and errors committed by the students. Uh, for example, a student who hadn't attended this practical at all and uh, just a day before the exam, he and his friend uh, were practicing this particular part. So they were reading from the journal he is the, this person has never seen the practical uh, being performed. So they were just discussing by reading in the journal. So they were discussing like this. Okay, 111, 111, 111, 111. Okay, done. This is the test. And in actual exam, the student performed like this. The subject was seated. And remember, patient is expected to say 111 or 999 because you are examining the patient and his or her uh, respiratory system. But since the student has never attended the practical, the student himself started saying 111, 111. While feeling the chest wall of the patient, the student was calling out this 111, 111. So these things do happen uh, if you have not performed these clinical practicals. Look, this is a skill. Clinical skill has to be obtained with repeated uh, practices. So therefore, always attend the practicals. Okay, so 111, 111, 111, 111, this is being said by the patient, the subject, okay, and you are comparing it. I always see the students go in a very haphazard manner, maybe because of the stress of the exam. So they will place the hand here, then maybe here, then maybe here, and so on. Very haphazard manner. I'll give you an example to remember this particular part correctly. And this is just an example. This is just to make you remember. If you have a 10-story uh, building, 
okay each floor has got two flats hmm? and suppose you are a policeman and you are told that there is a robber and who is hiding in one of those flats and you are going to go flat wise flat by flat to see where that robber is hiding how will you go in a very systematic manner you will go flat by flat and floor by floor so checked 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 then next floor check 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 like that you are not aware in which flat the robber is hiding so you will do it in a very uh, very systematic manner isn't it now think of this particular test that we are conducting even here we will go flat by flat you know um or space by space so checked on one side then same space check on the other side check check uh, why is it a comparative method because now this part is important so listen to this part carefully why this is important uh, to check it uh, comparatively is because at some places you will get a lower sound at some place you will get a higher sound so you will have to compare the sounds you will have to know which one is normal which one is abnormal and for that it is essential that you go on doing it in a very systematic manner and space by space and compare on the on either side right so 111 111 1, placing the ulnar border in the space then immediately on the other side 111 1, 111 1, 1, 1, and so on uh okay now same test if it is performed by using stethoscope it is called as vocal resonance right uh, this was called tactile vocal frameters because you use the touch of the ulnar border now in the auscultation you are going to use the stethoscope and the test remains the same exactly same only thing is you are using seto so it's called as vocal resonance same thing the subject says 111 111 111 111 111 and you are going to place the stethoscope space by space uh, and side and side uh, the one side and the other side so 111 111 111 111, 111. mind you subject is going to say 111 or 999 and you are examining the chest wall okay uh well we missed one point here let me just uh, quickly add that point the chest is divided into nine parts for any respiratory system examination uh supraclavicular infraclavicular mammary inframammary these four are on the anterior side let's just write it here the four parts on the anterior chest wall they are supraclavicular means above the clavicle of course infraclavicular then mammary and infra mammary and then uh on the sides axillary and infra axillary so two on the sides and then on the back side three spaces supra scapular above the spine of the scapula so supra scapular infra scapular and interscapular can you repeat it in your mind supra scapular that is above the spine of the scapula then infra scapular and then interscapular so nine regions of the chest wall can you repeat it once again supra clavicular infra clavicular mammary infra mammary this is on the anterior side then on the sides axillary and infra axillary and on the back 
suprascapular, infrascapular and interscapular between the two scapulae, right. Uh, so, your respiratory system examination also has to go like this in the nine regions, one after the other. So, suprascapular here, then suprascapular here, then next. Or uh, for this particular test, you can just go space by space. That is also acceptable. Just go space by space. That's also fine for this particular test. Anyways, now coming to the interpretation. The most important part is interpretation of this particular test. And how will you narrate the interpretation, narrate the result to the examiner? Okay. Basically, we are examining the lungs. Right? Okay. Lungs are filled with air. The alveoli are filled with air. And your expected result, if it's a normal patient, normal subject, then the vibrations, they are uh, carried via the respiratory passage. Finally, they are carried to the lungs and they reach the chest wall and from the chest wall you are feeling those vibrations and hearing those sounds. Okay. Now the interpretation should be if imagine the lungs are absolutely normal. This is a normal subject. Lungs are normal. Both lungs contain air. Then uh, your result should be the vocal resonance is equal on both sides tactile vocal foramatus is equal on both sides and if it is equal uh, you are assuming of course that uh, both lungs are having only air it's a normal situation and therefore the patient is normal for the respiratory system now imagine certain conditions consolidation of the lung i mean imagine the right lung apex has consolidation of the lung. Consolidation means solidification of the lung tissue. Consolidation or solidification. When does that happen? It happens in the condition of pneumonia. Pneumonia has got four stages. Over the nine or ten days, it goes through four successive stages. And this stage is that of consolidation, uh, the, the later stage. So, lung tissue has got solidified and remember solids are good conducting medium for the sound compared to air. So, imagine air on the opposite side and this apical region is consolidated due to pneumonia. What will be your finding? Vocal resonance is increased, exaggerated on over the consolidated area compared to the other side which contains air. I repeat once again, compared to air, solid would be a good conducting medium and this lung tissue has been solidified. So, it will conduct those vibrations, 111999 vibration will be conducted better. So, when you feel it over the, uh, over the chest wall, you will feel better vibrations over the consolidated area. So, in the exam, if they ask you, when is the resonance increased? Answer is consolidation uh, as occurs in pneumonia. Uh, when does the sound or vibration decrease? It decreases in the conditions of pneumothorax and pleural effusion. Let's just write it here. Pneumothorax and pleural effusion, accumulation of fluid in the pleural space is pleural effusion and pneumothorax, accumulation of air in the pleural cavity, in the pleural space, that's called as pneumothorax. Air accumulation, pneumothorax. Fluid accumulation, pleural effusion. So, imagine here that uh, there is pleural effusion on one side. Let's say on the left side, there is pleural effusion. 
So fluid accumulated in the plural space. Let's use some other color here. Fluid accumulated in the plural space surrounding the lung tissue. Now what will happen is uh, because of this plural effusion or pneumothorax, the underlying lung tissue is relaxed and it fails to transmit those vibrations. In the plural effusion and pneumothorax, the underlying tissue is relaxed and it fails to transmit those vibrations. And therefore, in the condition of plural effusion and pneumothorax, uh, the vibrations will be heard less, uh, or rather vibrations will be felt less or sounds will be heard less on the side which is affected. So just to revise and uh, uh, keep it in mind or learn by rote, learn by heart, pneumonia consolidation, the vibrations are increased. Uh, Plural effusion and pneumothorax, the vibrations are decreased. Okay. Just last one question. You don't know what condition the patient is suffering from. You are just examining and you get more vibrations on one side and less vibrations on the other side. How will you know that this more is abnormal and it is because of the pneumonia? and the other side is normal or more is normal and decreased sound on the other side is because of pleural effusion and pneumothorax. Have you understood the question? You are not aware of the patient's clinical condition or disease that the patient is suffering from. You started the examination and you get more vibrations. Forget about this diagram where we have drawn this. You get more vibrations on one side and lesser vibration on the other side. How would you know that this more is abnormal and the other side is normal? And compared to the other side, this is more which is abnormal. It may be because of pneumonia or the condition could be this more is normal on one side and that lower vibration is due to the abnormality like pleural effusion and pneumothorax. How would you know this? You are just getting one sound more, uh, I mean, one side more vibrations and the other side is less vibrations. So, the answer is you are examining on both sides and over the entire lung field. And therefore, once you check the entire lung field, you get an idea as to which is normal and then which is abnormal. Okay, so that's one uh, way of explaining. The other way is, look, consolidation normally occurs in the apical regions of the lungs. Normally, I'm not saying always, but in the upper parts, it is more common. Whereas plural effusion, uh, since it's a fluid, it will start accumulating in the lower regions first by virtue of gravity. So lower uh, ends are filled first. This is another, you know, just uh, explanation for that particular question which I asked. But anyways, to remember the clinical interpretation, vibrations and vocal resonance is increased in pneumonia and consolidation of the lungs and decreased in pleural effusion and pneumothorax. So that was the test um, for vocal resonance with stethoscope and tactile vocal phrametus with the ulnar borders of the hands.